Harlem, New York City, where I was raised. This is where I learned to play the game and also where I learned anything is possible. I want to show you around a little bit so you get a better understanding of who I am as a player, as a coach, and most importantly as a person. I love this game. And in order to understand who I am now, I think it's important to see where I'm from. You know, my game was grown in the, on the courts, on the streets. You know, there weren't a lot of uh, indoor gyms that we had access to, so you got a ball and you went to the park, you know, and, and you played. Whoever was there, that was your competition, or you just practiced and played, you know, against yourself. Um, you know, New York City basketball, to me, is just like a toughness. It's a grit, you know, it's fast-paced, it's, it's intense. Um, and I think all of that is developed from the street, you know, because you learn to compete, you learn to be tough, you learn to face adversity. And, you know, the next step to that becomes taking your game from the parks and from the street and, you know, refining it. And as your IQ grows and you get better and you learn more and you're exposed to different types of basketball, you learn how to translate your game from pickup to structure. This girl right here said she was watching me. Man, I had to watch some of her moves while I was on the court sometimes. I would miss a pass watching her just maneuver through people and get her shot up any way she wanted. I don't think I ever seen her get her shot blocked. Never. Snake, left-handed and slithering. It's hard to guard. It's hard to guard. <laughs> Let me tell you, man. Let me tell you. I'm telling you right now. Like <laughs> Like my thousand point, career point in high school. Um, and then all of these are just from like the summer, you know, just playing in different tournaments. This was high school MVP. Um, I had a brief stint as a tennis player, <laughs> short lived. Um, you see East Orange, first place. I mean, when we played with Douglas, we just didn't lose, man. When we got to a, a tournament, we were trying to win. And that was like, that was really it. You know, it's an academic award I got in college, actually. And then I led the whole city in free throw shooting. I make free throws. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just go slam jam. You got a uh, West Fourth. Um, you know, just a lot of them. This is when we first made the NCAA tournament at St. Bonaventure as a coach. That was like my one of my more proud moments. Out of basketball, we won a lot. And it's like each trophy, when I kind of look at it, I remember the actual game, you know, who we played against. Um, but it's a cool thing, you know, it's one of those things that you'll remember forever. Um, at least my mom will, so. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. See what I was building. What up? <laughs> Some days you might have three games in a day, like so you you at every game going hard, going hard. Too. Like it was the first game of the day in the heat, in the heat, in the heat. One o'clock, sun beaming. Oh my god! Towards the end of the year when it started, and the line to get in, literally like starting at like three o'clock. Down the block. Down the block. Down the block. You had your icy white tea. Never mind. <laughs> it used to be so packed. And it wasn't a line where it was one person standing it was behind. No. It was about <laughs> it was a crowd this big Why? all waiting to get in. And there was still a line behind behind you. It was about five people next to you. That wasn't a line. It was just a crowd. Like, we going to go in together. Sebastian Telfair was playing and killing it. Steph, it was Steph, on Steph was playing on the same team. And even though it was like men's basketball, like the girls and the women that played followed it just as much. You know, it was like you grew up kind of watching them play and you kind of modeled after how physical they were, the handle, how, how just everything, everything. Court awareness, just the IQ. Everything from the, the way they dribbled the ball, like you wanted to dribble just like that. Just imagine this whole thing full of people. Just imagine. And everybody just hyping it up. Like, yeah! Cause so, they get packed in here. They mm -hmm. get packed. Now this is probably one of the biggest parks in parks. New York City. Absolutely. Like, and it gets packed. And we're talking even not just in the park, outside the park, yep. around it. 
climb on the gate there, climb on the gate there, climb on the pole over here. <laughs> Wherever you can do to just slide in, sit on the poles, you know, kind of be in the back park over there and kind of wiggle your way through. <laughs> you did what you needed to do. But you were just exposed to so much basketball and competitive high level basketball. That's entertainment. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I forget, I'm almost forgetting about all this stuff, like thinking yeah. about it. You really think about how much basketball was your summer, it was your entertainment. It was everything, really. And even if you weren't playing, you were around it. So you almost were always, you always were getting better because you were exposed to it in some degree. Whether you were watching somebody else play. It's a big help for the neighborhood as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I keep a lot of these knuckleheads. At just, bay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this is, you know, it, this is a big help for the community, especially in like an urban community where it's mostly violence, and drugs. violence and drugs. This is a big help, at least for a good for five hours out of the day. <laughs> built to handle disappointment and, and, and keep going regardless, um, it can be a struggle. That's what separates athletes from the average person, is we put ourselves through hell, um, you know, just to succeed. And a lot of people aren't willing to do that. You know, as much as we talk about what it takes to succeed, a part of that is, is failure. And a part of that is being disappointed and, and handling it. And pushing and, and striving anyway. I never really knew where basketball would take me. I definitely never thought I would coach. I definitely never thought I would start my own company. My job now is to help inspire young ladies on and off the court. It's funny how life works out that way. You never really know where you're going, but you know it's right when you get there.